I had a third uh, uh, dissertation member, James Clancy. I don't know if anyone here has heard of him. He was a, an, an actor scholar from Stanford University, an extraordinary actor. And he taught an aesthetics class and basically in my hands said, here, Theodore Lips, this is negative empathy. So the other thing unquestioning in the way that I didn't question what, well, like, of course, American theater is all the, I did not question that, of course, if you are writing any new play, you are delving into what Theodore Lips calls negative empathy. The purpose of drama is to make us project ourselves into everything that we fear and everything that we resist and everything that we are revolted by. That is the purpose of drama. The Greeks, it's all negative empathy. Shakespeare, the Jacobeans, right? Restoration, uh, comedy, certainly a moment, right, of negative empathy. And, and unthinkingly, I thought as I was receiving this, well, of course, negative empathy, and that puts you into a conversation with a pre-20th century dramaturgy. Mm -hmm. um, not thinking ahead, did I realize that what we are experiencing in the commercial theater are models of dramaturgy that had been a purgation of negative empathy. That we actually now, as a way of underwriting the production of theater, it's based on only positive empathy. The questions in the last 20 years that have come up in conversations um, have been, do I like this character? <laughs> I don't want to say this, no one will like my character. I don't know that we can afford to do this play right now, it's too upsetting to our board members, et cetera, mm. and so forth. So my feeling as I went along is that the way that I was given this incredible cornucopia uh, of, of drama is exactly the way to take the playwrights that I started working with and arm them for discussions with directors, literary managers, artistic directors, that they're going to go in and say, what about Euripides? <laughs> right? I don't know. I, I wrote that play and my committee said, how dare you? And uh, I got a lot of people angry and it, it actually stopped uh, a couple of I burned a couple of bridges with um, artistic directors in the American theater hmm. who read it um, read the, either Desdemona or Oldest Profession and said you, you are a very sick woman <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I thought that was you know it wasn't interesting at the time it was extremely debilitating so I feel like I'm spending most of my adult life with writers in their 20s and 30s who write something and get that response. And I'm there trying to say, you know what, this is what negative empathy does. Congratulations, you just pushed someone's button. <laughs> now, how do you push the button without burning the bridge? Which I did not learn how to do until too late. Does that make sense? One of my concerns as an educator is how do we A, uh, try to make theater accessible um, as I know you're all struggling with, and B, how to make sure that that accessibility is on our campuses. Um, and it is that fight, I feel, that we are duplicating again and again, whether we're teaching at a university level, having to defend our budgets in terms of production and in terms of actual praxis being on our campuses, or whether it's proselytizing the local school boards not to cut high school after school programs right now seems to be uh, also, I think, uh, regret regrettably, mm -hmm. one of the themes right now that we're all facing. So um, for me, I'm just so happy and glad and lucky um, that I, I, I came from this place. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm imagining people in this room have also stumbled in to a theater because of a high school teacher or a mm -hmm. junior uh, high school teacher or someone, right, that just said, here, here's the door, it's open. Um, and I just fell in love and didn't go away from age 15. Um, that was it.